Welcome. This is To Debate, your podcast of debates. My name is Dirk and I'm sitting next to Sebastian in the flesh, in person, in the same room, breathing the same air. Um, I, I'm not quite sure if I can handle that much of uh, physical closeness in the debate with Sebastian, but I will try. Today's debating motion is... Two copies of a person should be allowed to exist at the same time. Now, to be precise, because that's a bit of a abstract motion, um, what we mean is what is usually called uploading. So imagine a technology that's able to analyze your brain to the detail and make a copy of your personality, your memories, everything that's in your brain and store it somewhere or transfer it somewhere. Should it be allowed that there are two versions of you, two copies, if you will, present at the same time? By the flip of a coin, we decided that I'm going to be against that motion. Sebastian will argue for it. And I have the pleasure to go first, which gives him the second mover advantage. In another debate, he argued that following is, is worse than leading, but I... I'm not sure. Usually Sebastian wins debates. He has the last word on. So let's see how it goes this time. Are you ready for the debate, Sebastian? I am ready. You start. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do this. Dirk goes first and argues against the motion. So in our little opening... I pointed out an important aspect right there. It's quite a stretch and a, quite an assumption there that our personality and what we feel when we think about ourselves is really just the matter in the brain. We have an assumption right here that we could take out the brain and in that brain, everything will be captured that makes us us. Um, Now, while it looks, uh, while that sounds totally natural to us today, this is an assumption people in history wouldn't have shared. So in former times, people were totally sure that what makes us us is part of the heart, for instance. And today you find scientists that tell you that your self-image and your self, the, your personality is actually dependent on much more than just your brain. It's how you feel every, every cell in your body. So question right there is, is it enough to just copy your behavior and your memory to capture really who you are? But I'm, I'm going to point to another aspect. The other aspect is more or less a ethical and a legal one. If you have a copy of yourself, and like multiple use, who is um, supposed to be the one taking decisions and who is supposed to be blamed for decisions that go wrong? That's not clear. And to may, to uh, to explain what I mean by that, um, let me let me give you an example. Imagine you, Sebastian, you murdered someone, and after you murdered someone, you took a copy of yourself, and there are two Sebastian all of a sudden. Which Sebastian am I allowed to throw in jail? The new version of you, the old version of you, both of you. It points to a core problem. Once you start copying yourself, you're basically breaking the chain of agency. It's not clear anymore um, who depends on what, who le what leads to what. And I think this is a problem we cannot allow to happen. We should not allow to happen. Therefore, no, uh, should not be allowed to have two copies of you existing at the same time. Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his argument. This is Sebastian Clone 393 speaking. As you can see, I can speak clearly in English, and I am no master, no slave to any other entity called Sebastian. And that's very important because even though I am maybe a copy, I do have my own independent entity. I am actually my own self. I was copied to be identical at the very beginning at time zero of the copy, but then because of external stimuli, internal stimuli, my own cells, or the way I'm constituted, I've evolved differently. But what's the point? Why do it? Uh, I could say why not, uh, because we're going to get there anyway. But to be a bit more serious, I think there's one good reason that we may want to do this for, and there's extra reasons I will add to it afterwards. One thing is we may want to keep good minds around. 
But here's the thing, because we can't choose who would be a good miner as opposed to a bad miner, not worth it, it would be uh, back to eugenics and deciding who gets to live or who gets to be reproduced, um, I think we just need to allow that right for everyone. And the reason why we don't want to wait until maybe the end of your life to copy your mind is because things could go wrong before that time arrives. For instance, you could develop a brain disease. So the copy would actually not work uh, technically as efficiently if we had copied your brain or your mental image before you developed any disease. In fact, on that point of the disease, there's probably value for research to analyze how two identical minds would evolve in different environments to see how uh, and uh, we could probably fix brain diseases because of the very same identical state of the neurons evolving in a different uh, environment. Also, um, there's a lot of uh, talk and we have a possible motion around having children or not. Uh, we had something around this actually, uh, on the notion of children. And that's actually a perfect alternative to having children, to pass on your mind to humanity in a way that is not transmitting your genes to the next generation. It may, may sound funny, but actually it's just one alternative to that aspect. Um, and I'm at the end of my two minutes, so maybe I'll add more afterwards. In conclusion, I do think it's very much, very interesting and very much worth it to have two copies at the same time because they will evolve differently in any case. And now on to Dirk. Let's hear his rebuttal. I read once an article about the potential future of an, an all powerful machine AI. And the article at some point concluded that the worst case scenario is not that that machine has no emotions or that machine is not um, really intelligent. The worst case scenario is that the machine is intelligent and may be even a perfect copy of how we humans behave. But in the on the inside, there is something missing. Something that we have, our sense of self, our consciousness, that's not being copied. So we have, uh, there's a risk that you can have copies that behave perfect like the original, but there's, there's a crucial element killed in the process. Now you would say maybe as a scientific person, I don't believe in the soul. Um, I don't believe in, in anything eternal, anything that's not just matter. But the fact of the matter is you don't know. And there's a little thought experiment I like to do on that to illustrate what I mean. Imagine um, we have a device that can beam you to another planet. You can walk the Mars. Elon Musk colonized the Mars and then we have a transporter. You walk in there and you can walk on Mars. What it does, it breaks away your atoms and it assembles a complete copy of you and Mars. Everything good. Now, next step. You had that trip, was awesome, you wanted to rebook it. A year later, you come there and you do the same thing. You go into the transporter and uh, the, the person operating it presses a button and nothing seemed to happen. You say, what's, what's wrong? I thought I'm, I'll be at Mars now. And the guy said, no, we improved the device. Now we don't have to deconstruct your original body. You're already, your copy is already walking on Mars. The downside of it is, unfortunately, the original will have a heart attack in five minutes you're probably going to feel bad about that idea, even though there is a perfect copy, because internally you believe in a soul. You believe there's something that's split between those two. There are multiple places that are you now. And this posts an ethical problem. Uh, imagine, and then now go back to the complete copy scenario. Imagine your copy is doing something that's unethical. Again, killing somebody. Actually, by producing the copy, you're to blame too. So is it, is it your fault that you have a copy of yourself and that copy of yourself does something? How do you, how do you work around that? Um, also, you mentioned it, people will, it will cost something to copy yourself. It costs resources, it costs effort. At some point, um, at least in the beginning, only the wealthy, only those who are exposed to that technology will have the opportunity to do it. Do we really want to allow that uh, people just by mere virtue and luck of being exposed to that resources are starting to copy themselves? Is that something that steers us in the right direction? I don't think so. So no, 
for the very reason that we don't know what we are doing if we have copies and what happens to our personality and what we are actually copying for the reason that we don't want to allow it for ethical reasons i'm strictly against having copies of persons at the same time next up sebastian let's hear it let me go through your various arguments on the cost aspect i can't change the system if we're in a capitalistic society this is the way it works initially the most wealthy get access to the technology first but that's true for everything uh, and gradually cost will go down so i don't think that's the the main concern here uh, i think there's one um, trap you get into and that is you consider that the initial um, body or the initial person is responsible for its copies My claim is actually completely at the opposite of that. I'm saying that these new copies have their own legal entities. You don't own them. That's why I was half joking at the beginning. I'm no master, no slave to anyone else who's maybe my creator in a way because he or she had that initial mind. But as soon as that copy is created, it has no dependency on the first one. In fact, it will evolve completely independently because of the external stimuli, even if I'm in the same spot, in the same room, just because I'm slightly at a different position, it will start evolving differently. So there's a different legal entity, that, which means to your case of the murder where I, I kill someone and then right after I create a copy, well, my copy is not responsible. The initial uh, uh, person still gets to go to jail. There's no difference whatsoever. And I think there's one use case which uh, I've not mentioned before, which I'd like to uh, mention here is, imagine the case of disabled people, handicapped people who may have great minds or whatever uh, their mind will not have lived their life they wanted to live. And they may want to have their personality in some way reproduced in another entity, another machine, whether it's human flesh or metallic robot, uh, which will leave a better life. Now, indeed, this goes into contradiction with what you're defining as the concept of a soul and what defines uh, uh, consciousness. And that, I don't think we have an answer. Nobody knows. I, I actually don't believe that it's anything more than what's in our brain. Yes, we're influenced by stimuli, which is physical by ourselves and everything else. But I do believe the, the notion of consciousness is indeed the mere juxta juxtaposition of our atoms and electrical signals. It may seem sad for some people, but I think it's not more than this. Otherwise, where else is it? How can you define it? Um, in fact, what's very interesting is people who have split brain personality, what happens in that in that case, uh, it's it's a, a defect, but you have basically, everyone has two hemispheres of your brain and there's a connection in between the two and I forget the Latin name for it, but yeah, well, you know, you know better than me. See, perfect. And when you break this, when you break this connection with two, two hemispheres, you do develop two consciousnesses, which shows that it is somewhere there in the brain and when you create a copy, there would be an independent consciousness developing also. So I think it's very exciting. It is indeed quite scary on the onset, but there is a lot of uh, value in exploring what could happen with an identical mind. And because we don't, there's no legal way that we can rationally justify to saying who could be allowed to copy themselves or not, we should allow this right of freedom um, for everyone who wants it. And initially, indeed, it will be the most wealthy, but that's a, a separate issue because cost will go down. So overall, yes, I think uh, it's interesting to let two copies of the same person exist at the same time. Final statements. It's Dirk's turn. Just to be clear, I was not talking about an immortal, godly soul. It's The jury is still open if you really just... the the matter in your brain you still feel your arms your body your f your feet your gut all of this this whole experience makes up who you are and we simply don't know if it's just enough to copy your brain now to the other point my my point about resources required is more an ethical one it would be right now the west dominating um the east and africa and i think in a world that we try to influence for the better, we probably shouldn't allow that. And uh, in a capitalistic world, this is what will happen if you don't put a break on it right away. And uh, last not least, coming back to the ethical question, how about you kill someone and put a copy and your copy kills someone over put a copy. You could be 
you could make it a system of being always free out of jail because the copy had everything in history that the original had. So that is like an like an ethical problem that you cannot just resolve by saying the copy is independent. It's you, after all, with all the memories, all the decisions, all the background, just saying it's okay, it's not cutting it. No, no, we shouldn't allow it. Sebastian. I'll insist, you are not responsible for your copies. If you do decide to have a copy, it becomes independent. You lose every right on it because it becomes its own independent legal entity. You are not in their heads. It may be your initially a copy of your mind, but the minute it starts existing, it starts being independent. It starts having evolving differently than your own mind. You don't have a switch or a way to control what they're experiencing. They're like a different person. Um, the second thing, and that was the the one of the arguments I had developed, was to say, well, we may want to reproduce some of the most creative, innovative, kind minds out there. And the thing is, I would consider it unethical to choose who gets to be reproduced or not. So the right should go for everyone. And lastly, if anything, here's, I, I think, one of the very strong arguments. I think one of the best ways to understand and how to cure brain diseases is to see how identical brain setups can evolve differently and one may actually develop the disease and the other one not. I think that's the best way, one of the best ways to compare and see what's happening, what's wrong in, uh, in, in the evolution of a brain and how to cure it. So yes, let's have two copies at the same time for the same person. Another debate in the books. And I'm still not sure what you really think, Sebastian, but I I definitely um, would welcome more of you. <laughs> Having multiple Sebastians, what could possibly go wrong? I guess what I'd like to see happen is a way to be able to transfer your mind so you retain that sense of self. And I don't... I, I struggle. I think it will, this, is, this is not the way... I don't know. I don't know what would happen, actually. The fact, uh, the fact of the matter, and that was what I tried to get at, is... Um, neuroscience and philosophy basically tell you we don't know if that's possible because no one will know you can uh, I'm, I'm with you I believe technically it will be possible to copy whatever you have in your mind we just will have no way of knowing if it's really the same thing if I copy you into a machine and the machine starts just giving the same answers and ha speaking with the same same accent and all that and uh, behaving like you would, still I have no way of knowing. And this is this is actually the scary part. Like imagine we upload, uh, whole humanity uploads to a computer system and then basically the only magic thing that happens and uh, that existed in this world is gone. <laughs> and anyway, we're in a game simulation, so but we're already yeah. in the matrix. I mean, yeah. that's not even a joke. Right? Like there's theories around this that would actually be the objects of a massive game simulation. Yeah, quite a thinking mistake. Uh, but Elon Musk likes it, and if Elon Musk likes no, it, no, it no, has to be no, true. Not the only one. He's not the only one saying that. There's, there are interesting papers out there that you can read that basically dig through that with uh, philosophical arguments, and it's very interesting but, as a thought experiment. But back but, yeah. to your point, yes, I'm, I'm. It sounds scary, but it's also fascinating. For me, it's. Uh, because it will happen eventually. You will have, at, at, at the very least, you will have a mad scientist out there who will try with the tools at hand, so right now you don't have them. But it will happen. You will want, you, we're just wide that way. We're just sick in our minds a little bit uh, without making any, any pun here. But we want to experiment. We want to know. We want to try. We want to see what happens. Even if it leads to, to disastrous results, look at you know, nuclear power and whatever used for the wrong purpose. But I think there will be experiments. And I, I don't know, I just find it fascinating. I'm, I'm smiling because I'm curious. I want to know. I'd love to know what happens. And because I'm scared of dying also. I don't want to die. I want to continue experiencing and feeling. And yeah, but having if, a copy of you may, may not prevent you oh, from dying. Oh, I, 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 my mind from dying, right? I'm, I'm, I'm to the point of saying, if you can guarantee me that I will, I will retain a sense of self, even if I have to go to a metallic box, let's say, which allows me to still do a few things, maybe you don't know, read a book or something, then I would sign, I would but sign here, up for but that. But here's the thing, your argument was that uh, the copy is a new entity. Yes. That's not the same as you, it's like, like your twin. 
So yes. uh, imagine you have a button where you can say, oh, I have a copy of myself in a machine and then I have to take the gun and br blow my brains out. I'm pretty sure you would, would not like that idea. No, it's true. Yeah, no. and uh, you would not like that idea because the copy is not you. And I think the copy would be totally sure that they actually maintain yeah, yeah. the sense of self. I think where the, the the moment the the one aspect where where I was struggling the most is really that agency thing. I believe um, our society depends a lot on uh, the fact that we know who's doing things and making decisions and how that depends on each other. And uh, being able to copy yourself breaks this entirely. It's like uh, the, the example I was giving. It's actually, actually, if you if you think of it, I, I have no solution for that. Um, even if you say, oh yeah, it's always a, a new entity. That, Imagine you keep copying yourself, or um, whenever you do something wrong, you do a copy, um, or you you make copies that then for you do things. Um, I'm I'm not convinced by the argument that per, that is a completely new person because basically that copy of you is based on your decision making. If you decide to kill someone and, uh, in order to be sure, make a copy before that, the copy will kill, kill someone. So two things. One is the argument I did not use was to say uh, copying oneself may not be that easy. The reason why I did not use that argument is that eventually it will become easy and cheap. Eventually. Let's project ourselves in three centuries. Right? That would be probably like, like well, you go, as, you, as you go to the supermarket and buy just another product. Right? That's why I did not use that argument because I didn't want to be cornered in, into that space. But my argument that it is a different entity, the point is the person who commits the murder who actually holds the gun or the knife or whatever it is, is one entity. You know which one it is, and you will put that entity in jail. And when it, once in jail, you will not even be able to reproduce yourself and have another copy roaming around. Maybe we restrict that freedom I because can, you're in jail. I can for copy instance. you for that purpose. I can copy me for my for that purpose. But you could copy your, yourself to what to do? Commit a murder? For instance. But I don't think you can instruct that other entity to do something. That's my point. You're no master, no but slave. But the other entity is based on you. Imagine you hate. Imagine you hate someone so so much that you want to kill that person, and your copy but, will hate the person just the same. But I think the intention of murder is is by the time you have the copy, that that entity will will run independently. Even if the intention was, the intention may be to kill, but the act of killing is yet something else. You can stop before the intention but, and and the act. You couldn't have done it without you copying yourself. I, guess that I mean, you're guilty of producing that copy at least, right? If you copy yourself, that's an act that you commit. And if you copy yourself to the purpose of having somebody else doing something, I mean, my, my whole point is... I, I, get, I, get, I guess how, I get what to, you're saying. How to, how to get out of this loop is for me so, not really... So I, I don't have the, f the final answer to this, but I think it will open up a new area of jurisdiction where you will define, for instance, if uh, by analyzing the, the roots uh, and the causes of a murder, let's say, if it happens within five minutes, let's say, of the, of the copy being reproduced, I'm not, again, don't, don't get me on the, on the five minutes or whether it's 10 minutes. It's like a proper investigation by the justice system to look at, or maybe examine, maybe we'll have tools to examine what, were the, what was the thought process, what was the intention of getting the copy. If the intention was to commit murder, and you do, and the, and the, and the copy actually does kill someone within a time frame or with a, within specific circumstances, then indeed, maybe all of the copies and the original will go to jail. But I, I'm, I'm saying this will open up a new area that you need to define. Anyway, that's it. And we are tired, we are jet lagged, and uh, we should stop recording for like it's it's 10 p.m. We're jet lagged. We're recording this and debating on the debate and doing multiple takes in Spanish, in German, in English, and then we yeah we did didn't we? Yeah, but not in German. You were uh, rambling in oh, Spanish. Oh, I was a copy of me, I guess. So we yeah, it was a copy of you. Okay. While the original went to the bathroom, the copy went on rambling in Spanish. Gracias. So thank you for listening, everyone. Uh, don't forget to vote. Don't forget to comment on Facebook, on todebate.net, on Instagram, wherever you feel like. And stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you. Bye.